Hi, my name is Stuart Green. I'm an estate planning attorney focused on asset protection and tax planning for high net worth clients. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button as well as subscribe to our channel because we're putting out new content all the time that I think will be really helpful and relevant and probably different than a lot of the videos that are out there that are more focused on basic strategies. So today's video is going to be about an estate tax strategy aimed at potentially completely eliminating any estate tax or certainly reducing your estate tax to the extent possible. So there's a lot of different strategies. There's different trust planning you can use. There's different gifting strategies. And gifting is probably the most popular strategy. Um, so one of the things that you should know is that the IRS allows you to transfer during your lifetime and on your passing a certain amount of assets, in value a certain amount of assets. So that changes from year to year. Right now it's 12.92 million. That's set to go back down to around 5.5 million. It could be a little higher because of inflation, but it's always a moving target. So if it's a really high exemption, that's what they call it, then, then that benefits you. If it's really low, then that is a disadvantage to you. So you can potentially run out of exemption because you've gifted too many assets during your lifetime and upon your passing. So that's something you've got to consider as you accumulate wealth over time. So what's another solution? One solution is to use a strategy called the installment sale to an intentionally defective grantor trust. It's a mouthful. So the IGIT, the intentionally defective grantor trust, or just call it a grantor trust, refers to the tax status of a trust. When a trust is a grantor trust, it's not taxed at the trust level. Instead, there's an individual who's deemed to be the owner for tax purposes of those assets. So any taxable activity that happens inside of the trust actually just ends up going on that individual's 1040, their personal tax return each year. So that's one piece of the puzzle to keep in mind. The other piece is, so if you're not gifting assets to trust or to other individuals, what can you do to remove assets from your personal taxable estate? And the other option is to sell your assets to trust that may be for the benefit of your kids or the benefit of someone else. Another option is if say one of your parents had previously set up a irrevocable trust for your own benefit and it has money inside of it, then you could leverage that trust to sell your own assets to a trust which benefits you, thus removing assets from your personal taxable estate. So there's a lot of nuances that go into this, but the point is, let's just say you're selling $10 million of your own individual assets to the grantor trust that's set up for the benefit of you or to one of your kids. You're selling it at perhaps at a discounted rate. There's different planning strategies that you can implement to make sure that you're actually reducing the value of your estate simply by using LLCs or limited partnerships and having a CPA perform evaluation. The way to reduce the value of those entities is to structure them in a way where the majority of the entity is considered non-voting interests and you sell those non-voting interests to these trusts. When a CPA performs a valuation, because it's heavily, heavily non-member, I'm sorry, non-voting interest, there's gonna be a significant discount on the valuation. So let's just say you have a $10 million limited partnership, you do a valuation, maybe you're able to get a 20 or 30, 35% discount based on the way it's structured. Now all of a sudden, a $10 million, uh, the, the entity that's worth $10 million in assets is now worth maybe $7 million. So that alone, you're able to freeze the value of that entity with the valuation. And then you begin selling that, those non-voting interests off to these trucks. And when you do that, you're getting them out of your own individual 
name and into the name of the trust. Because those trusts are grantor trust and you are responsible for the taxable activity, there is no income tax event that occurs when you sell an interest to the trust because it's essentially a transaction between yourself and the trust, which you are deemed as the owner of those assets for tax purposes. It's pretty nuanced and I know it can be confusing, but essentially there's no taxable activity that occurs when you sell your assets to that trust. What happens to those assets inside the trust is they're now able to appreciate and value outside of your personal taxable estate. So they're no longer in your name, they're in the name of the trust, they're able to appreciate. And when you sold those assets, you ended up just taking a promissory note for the value. Maybe the value is gonna be that discounted valuation provided by a CPA. So rather than you have 10 million, maybe you have a $7 million note. And now the $7 million note is not gonna appreciate in value like the assets that you moved into the trust. And those assets in the trust are what's going to accumulate free of any estate tax. So it's a very, very strategic and complicated planning strategy. But when used in conjunction with gifts and using your exemption very wisely, you can really, really reduce your taxable estate, even if it's significantly over the threshold. So as tax laws continue to change, this is a strategy that you're gonna see used more and more and more. So it's something to think about with your tax attorney.